Knowing how to code is not going to be enough in the real world. Now, don't get me wrong, there's obviously a baseline level of coding skills that you do need in order to get a developer job. But in my years working in the industry, I've worked with a lot of developers, some of them great, and some of them not so good. I've even seen some of them lose their jobs, either getting laid off or let go due to performance issues. And the thing is, what made the bad developers bad almost never had anything to do with their programming skills, but instead had to do with how well they worked with people. So what kind of people skills does it take to be a good web developer? In this video, I'm going to share with you some of the lessons that I've learned over the course of my career, both from observing other developers and through my own experiences and mistakes. So let's get into it. One of the most important skills you'll need is good communication. Communication is a necessity in any kind of relationship. And in a workplace environment, it's essential for everyone to be on the same page for the work to get done on time. For example, if you're working on a project and a red flag comes up that could jeopardize a timeline, make sure to tell the project manager or team leader as soon as possible. I know it can be hard and uncomfortable to speak up, but just imagine how much worse it'll be if you stay quiet and don't say anything until the day before the deadline. The sooner you bring up an issue, the sooner everyone can work together to find a solution. Another part of communication, especially as a web developer, is learning how to explain technical concepts to people who may not be very techy. I learned this early in my career and it was a rude awakening. When I was in a client meeting presenting our work on their website, I just threw up a screen share of my code editor and pointed out some things in the code. As you might imagine, this was very confusing to the client because unlike me, they didn't stare at code all day long. My coworker in marketing had to swoop in and salvage the situation by explaining in way more understandable terms what we had built for them. The key here is to put yourself in the other person's shoes and understand where they're coming from in terms of technical knowledge and what's important to them. And when you do have to talk about more technical things, make sure that you don't come off as condescending because there's nothing that people hate more than being talked down to. The last aspect of communication that I wanted to mention is providing helpful context when you have to say no to something. For example, if your project manager asks you to build a new feature, but it's not feasible within the project timeframe, or you don't have the skills to do so, don't just say, no, I can't do that. This isn't helpful to your coworkers or the client. If something really isn't possible, they'll need to have a good explanation to bring back to their boss. Also, if you can tell your team why something won't work, you can then all work together to try to figure out an alternative solution that will make everybody reasonably happy. Just saying no without a good explanation makes it harder for everyone to do work and you won't come off looking very good. The second skill that I want to talk about is respecting your coworkers' time. At work, you can safely assume that everyone is always busy. So if you have to talk to a coworker about a question or a problem, give them some time to respond. Don't come up to them with the expectation that they will give you an answer right away. For example, if you need to DM a coworker about something, don't spam them by writing a wall of text with your detailed problem right off the bat. First, shoot them a message saying, hey, I got a quick question whenever you have time, and then wait for them to respond when they're free. It seems like such a small gesture, but simply asking if your coworkers are busy will help make them feel like you understand where they're at and you won't come off looking entitled and demanding. I know that when I was in crunch time at work, it really helped when people would preface their messages to me by saying, hey, I know you're really busy, but I have a question for you. So try to be mindful that at work, everyone is probably busy, everyone is probably stressed about something, and to show some empathy to them while you're trying to get your own work done. The third skill that I want to mention is to help and support your coworkers when you can. When I started out as a junior developer, I had a lot of support from my boss and from my more experienced coworkers. When I'd spent an hour or two Googling a problem and still couldn't figure it out, I was always able to go to someone to ask for help. And in the same way, when I was a senior developer, I was always willing to help out my fellow devs because I knew how frustrating it could be to struggle for a problem for hours. And even outside of other developers, you might be asked questions by people in other departments, and I'd say the same goes for them. Help them when you can. Of course, don't spend all day helping someone else if it's gonna make you miss a deadline. But if you do have bandwidth available, helping someone else figure out an issue could really save the day for them. And you never know, maybe they'll be the one to help you in the future. 
One other way that you can support your coworkers is to do what I call positive name dropping, where you're mentioning them in order to make them look good. This could be at an internal review where you mention that the designer did a great job with the design, or even just in casual chats where you tell coworkers or your boss about how this person helped you on a project. I remember one time at a company all hands meeting, they announced that a website project that I had been part of had successfully launched. The marketing person talking about it mentioned the people on the team, but they forgot to mention my name. However, the next person on the team who was presenting had noticed the mistake, and during their turn, they made sure to mention that I had built the website. Sure, it wasn't the biggest deal in the world, but the fact that someone remembered me made a big difference to me. So don't underestimate how a small bit of kindness can go a long way. Now, the last skill is more of an FYI than anything else. It's that when you're working for a company, you will very likely have to work with technologies and tools that you're not a huge fan of. Legacy code is a big part of this. As much as people on dev Twitter love to talk about the cool cutting edge frameworks and features, the fact is that a lot of companies have websites that aren't running on the newest tech stack out there. What usually happens is when a company first builds a website, they'll use whatever tech is currently available and that their developers want to use. Then once a website is built, as long as nothing is super broken, a lot of companies don't see a reason to invest more money into a big upgrade just for the sake of using newer tools. Now, this does vary a lot by company. Larger tech companies may have the money and the willingness to do more frequent updates and thus stay up to date. But smaller companies may not have the budget or even see the need to do so. So if you end up working on a website that's a few years old, you might have to work with older technologies like WordPress, jQuery, or even worse, CSS floats. The only advice I really have for you in this type of situation is that it's all part of the job, and sometimes we have to work on projects that we don't really enjoy. But if you've been developing the other skills that I've talked about in this video, you should have plenty of coworkers that you can talk to, and you can all complain about having to use Bootstrap or PHP at work. Anyway, those are some helpful skills beyond coding that you'll need to learn as a web developer. Let me know in the comments what you thought and if you have any more tips for succeeding in the workplace. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.